Hello everybody, I am Nico D. So here is my Raspberry Pi 5. So it has got the NVMe uh, hat on it. So in this video we are gonna take a look at the cases uh, that I've got for it. So one case is uh, to put in uh, with the heatsink and the fan from the Raspberry Pi 5. So the heatsink and the fan from the Raspberry Pi 5 are pretty good. So it's uh, when it is overclocked to the maximum, so of 3 GHz on all cores, then uh, it can go up to 75 degrees and uh, the fan goes on uh, at the maximum and it doesn't go much over 75 degrees. So the heatsink of the Raspberry Pi, it is pretty good. So uh, that is good. So that is the first Raspberry Pi uh with a good uh, cooling uh, solution so uh, that's good so i've got the nvme hat i'm gonna have to take it off because it doesn't fit in any of these cases that is a pity so this one is passive uh, cooling uh, this one is active cooling with the fan and this one is a case for a seven inch display to make a tablet out of it I do not have this 7 inch display but we can take a look at it. So I just done a benchmark, uh, 3 minutes 22 seconds, uh, Nico D Blender benchmark. It went up to 75 degrees Celsius, so let's turn it off. Oh and let me tell you what I'm working on otherwise. So this is the mixed style core 3588. E. It is a nice sum, so it is a sum, so you put it on the board, uh, it is a nice sum, but there is a big problem with it. So the software on it is pretty good, so it is uh, Joshua Rick, his Ubuntu that they cloned. Uh, so the sum itself is good, but the problem with it is the SD card doesn't work as it should. So uh, it works at 3 megabytes a second, so that isn't usable. And there is no way that I know to uh, enter mask ROM, so uh, I cannot install anything else on the eMMC. I also can't install anything on the NVMe because there is no SPI, so I don't know what to do with this. Another board, this one. Is from UE2 the R1 also the RK3588S on here this is mm, yeah it is very bad software uh, Debian it is nearly worthless the Debian that they give uh, so it also has the uh, Android partitioning so with the user data and uh, a root partition, uh, it's not good, I don't like it. The Android is without uh, Google Play Store, so I don't want to say to you, buy this. So you see, I am working on things and maybe I will not make a video about it. Uh, I am not always positive. If I am not positive, I just don't make a video. Okay, so let's take this out. I will have to take off my NVMe hat. So here is the Raspberry Pi fan. How do I take it off? Oh no. Oh no, I don't have to take it off. Let's first do this case. So this is a simple case, you just put the Raspberry Pi like this. You fix it onto there. Let's see for some screws. Okay. So this is the passive case, no, the active cooling case. So it has got the fan inside, 
it does look pretty nice. You can plug in this. So you can reach for the GPIOs. So that's the first case. It does look pretty nice. There is a button for the power button. You can easily grab the SD card, not that easily. Uh, if I screw it down, then the SD cards would be more to the bottom and then you can take it out, but it is still hard. So it is my fault. You can take out the SD cards, but it is still not that easy. So I didn't screw it down. I only put one screw in. So this case is pretty nice. I might use it if I'm not happy with the passive heatsink. So let's put everything back. So that's one. Here is the second one. So this is with a good heatsink. But I hope I will be able to take this off because it isn't that easy. Okay. So what I need to do is pinch it. And push it. That's out. So here you see the heatsink is with the thermal pads, but the thermal pads are good enough. I could replace them with a copper shim, so it would perform a little bit better, but I don't mind. <coughs> Normally I do not like thermal pads, but if it keeps it cool, then it is okay. So. Take this off. Three, four. Okay. got here hmm. I think I will have to screw in these razors that doesn't work Okay, so I put the razors in. Now let's put this back in. I will take out the SD card. Okay, now I have to screw in these. Oh. 
Okay. Now well, I've got. Okay, yeah. So this one goes over the sock. Take off the plastics. Okay. This one is for the RAM. And now let's close this. So like this. feet no these feet don't come over the screws so uh, the screws will uh, scratch your tabletop so I use my blend loop script that runs blender 10 times after each other and the result isn't that good so after 10 minutes it goes to 80 degrees and then it goes over 80 degrees to 84 degrees celsius and i know it is throttling but the raspberry pi 5 doesn't show that that is a tradix issue that i've made a video about a long time ago about the raspberry pi 3b so let's try to improve this a little bit with a copper shim and some thermal pastes so while that is busy let me show you the other case so this is a big one. So here comes 7 inch display. Here comes the Raspberry Pi. So the HDMI ports, USB ports. You can take this off, so you can reach the, H, uh, the SD cards, or you can leave it on, so nobody can take off the SD card. Here to put on a camera. So this is a really nice case. I'm sure this will keep it cool. So you will have to take off this part to put in the Raspberry Pi and then put it back I will not assemble it today maybe when I get a 7 inch display then I will test this but yeah I cannot show anything more about this it is a very nice thing must be nice with the dis display so you can uh, work with it like that so that wasn't a great result so let's try to improve this where is my screwdriver so it is overclocked to 3 gigahertz uh, the gpu is overclocked to 1.1 gigahertz so it is overclocked a lot but even then I don't want it to overheat. This is going to be messy. If you want to be able to open it a lot, don't do this. So now... So as you see, it was making good contact with the sock. But that's not good enough. So it won't be enough. Yes, one is enough. So, where is my thermal paste? Here it is. A little bit there.
So this should be better. So let's try it. Now we will see if the case is enough to keep this cool at the maximum temperature, uh, at the maximum frequencies. And the result is in and it isn't great. So it did improve it a little bit. It didn't go to 85 degrees, but it did go to 83 degrees. So now it took 13 minutes before it reached 80 degrees Celsius versus 10 minutes with the thermal pad. I do have to say this is the worst case scenario. So this is with everything overclocked to the maximum and then the CPU at maximum for a long time. So for normal use it would never overheat, but when you use it maxed out for a long time then it will overheat. So it would need a bit more metal and more surface area to keep it under 80 degrees Celsius. When it is not overclocked it doesn't go over 80 degrees. So that will be it for today. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. See you later. Bye.